right, fantastic. And many thanks once again for continuing to hang out with us right here. That, what's the difference between hanging out, chilling? and watching anyways many thanks once again for hanging out with us right here on why in the morning welcome back my name is Brian Sanko and a very good morning to you if you're joining in just right about now this is why in the morning and the segment is Monday politics where we talk about uh, matters youth and leadership and what else is making or shaping the country uh, political wise but first things first I want you to do yourself or well, let's do each other a favor jump onto that hashtag that I said why in the morning uh, everyone feels Facebook, Instagram, including Twitter as well, is at Y244 channel. Remember on tweet on Instagram, that is uh, Y244 underscore channel. That's where you can find us and you can interact. But we've already posted an interesting question right there and also our photos and the question of the day. So I want you to contribute because we'll be sampling your feedback towards uh, the tail end of uh, the programming today. And uh, before we get too far, we have an amazing, uh, powerful guest who is joining us live today on our political segment. We're going to talk about matters, youth and leadership, as well as what is shaping the country political wise. And he's a very powerful gentleman. And I'll tell you a very exclusive, exclusive uh, detail about him uh, towards the end of the show. He's David O'Gara. And uh, he's a very, he comes from a very strong background, by the way very strong but he's a lawyer that's the most important part he's also an advocate of the high court of kenya associate advocate at abk advocates llp i i had to get that right because you know ksl community will come for me kenya school of law but uh away from that good morning davy good morning Nice to meet you after how many years? You told me 14. About 14 years, actually. Good yeah. Lord. You know, mm -hmm. uh, they say, binadam, binadam, onasama milema zizi kutana. But kutani, like any binadam wana kutana. It, right. Yeah. You have grown. <laughs> yeah. You have changed. A lot of things happened in between. You, you know? too, man. You too. Yeah. Uh, I, I always knew you'll be a lawyer, you know. I always knew. Like, you went from class prefect. This guy was a very great singer, by the way. A very good actor. And then uh, th there's something else you're doing. Uh, I was Apart from singing. Campus yeah. politics, yeah. Yes, at Kabara, yeah, right. right. At Kabara you were the student leader at Kabara. Yeah, I was a student leader. I always knew. Did you always know I'll be a journalist? One or another. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about that whole story. Because yeah. this guy is my desk mate slash class prefect. Yeah. You know, and it's funny, my co-host right here is also my classmate. Same group, same class, same course. So the universe is trying to tell me something that I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> the universe the is selling me something. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so from that, uh, good morning. First of all, welcome to i 2 channel. This is why in the morning I'm so happy and excited to have mm -hmm. you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Let's get into it straight up. Um, on fr yesterday we had uh, the president who was in uh, Narok at Olentimama Stadium. Of course, he's attending, you know, uh, church service. And then on the other side we had uh, <laughs> our powerful Azimio leader, uh, Raila Dinga, who was also, you know, had something to say. But at the end of the day, you know, a lot of sentiments were like, is it, a, is it the right time for us to be having all these rallies when maybe we should be, you know, supporting matters to do with, you know, reviving our economy, of course. The economy has experienced a very savage nose dive. Prices of food items are still low. Things are not so good. And uh, instead of us, like, maybe moving forward, I remember they said they're calling on to the international body, that is the Commonwealth, and uh, to, to do an audit of what happened exactly, you know, uh, at IEBC. And of course, there was this dossier whistleblower situation going on. They say they have more receipts and they're yet to actually reveal, you know, what exactly happened, like, officially in one of their rallies, again, that they're planning. From a litigant's perspective, um, what do you feel is going on and, and what can be done to ensure that we just bring unity and we forget that it happened, yes, and can we just move on because... This is the current government at hand. What can we do now? I think uh, we cannot just look at it from the legal side of it in as much as it also forms part of this. But majorly, this is also political. It is very much political. And uh, the president being the president, he's also a politician, away from him being the president. But there is a lot on him uh, in terms of him being... Uh, the symbol of national unity and many other facets that come with being a president. So right now talking about whatever is happening in the political field in terms of uh, the opposition as it is holding rallies during such a time, we can remember that um, during the Jubilee government, the second uh, leg of the Jubilee government, there were also political rallies going on. 
Yeah. So right now, someone would say that probably they're just tr trying to do that which the current president did before. But at the same time, they're also raising a pertinent question that has been there for some time. And this is uh, about um, electoral justice. So the question would be, do we have electoral justice? Because this has been there like for a very long time in our nation. Do we have electoral justice? And another question would be, what entails electoral justice? Transparency. The IEBC told us that uh, they conducted the most transparent uh, elections in the history of Kenya. But at the same time, you're seeing that there are a number of uh, commissioners who disputed that which the same same commission gave out as results. So what I would say is this, in as much as we already have uh, a judgment from the Supreme Court, about the elections. But let us just do an audit for the sake of us moving on because we want to move on. We want to build our nation. And a nation cannot be built if at all we are politicking every day and night. We have to move on in terms of uh, having agendas that uh, is based on development. So another question would be, who is forming the agenda of the nation? Is it the right. opposition? Is it the government? Because right now, as a nation, we're having so many issues. Already the government has tried to form agendas. Right. Number one, talking about taxes. The government wants to increase the tax base. That could be an agenda. Another thing is about the education system. Talk about CBC right now. There are so many questions about it. Another thing that the government is trying to shape in terms of agenda uh, is uh, the economy at large in terms of tea, coffee, milk. That is another agenda. Right. So who is going to form the agenda? Is it the opposition talking about electoral justice? Is it the government trying to uh, make sure that it is self-sufficient? Because the president yesterday actually talked about uh, the nation getting to a point where it is self-dependent in right. terms of uh, having its own financial muscles. Right. So who is going to form the agenda of the nation? Is right. it the opposition? Is it the government? Right. The solution that I would give is let us have a dialogue as a nation. Why? Oh, as a nation. As not, a like, nation. not like the two parties coming on the table and as a having nation, a chat first. As know? a nation, that includes the opposition and the government. All right. Yes. You, that, that would be an amicable solution to bring all this mess to an end? There is no any other solution that would be there away from having a dialogue. All right. Now, uh, that's a truce. That mm. would be a truce in another format, you know? Certainly. Right. Now, um, what, what could, uh, could possibly, you know, uh, make this other side agree to have that? Because they've been resolute, they've been firm, that they're not going to have any dialogue apart from, you know, ensuring that the other side want to retire. And on that note, I remember uh, that is uh, Saitabao Kanchori. You remember him? Mm -hmm. he's, uh, he's, uh, I think he's Azimio's chief. He was Azimio's chief agent during mm -hmm. the election. And recently in an interview, he said that, he doesn't want the opposition leader to actually contest for elections again. And it seems like, you know, that house is a volatile household. Things are not together. Now, um, the, the issue of uh, them calling for an audit, uh, the Commonwealth, again, they have to receive power from the government at hand. What will they do now? Because these rallies are continuing and they've promised to even have another rally again. Yeah, they have promised to have several rallies, several rallies. actually, Not across the country. Right. Uh, I think whatever the leader of Azimio, uh, Honorable Borel Odinga, said, is that right. I think this week they're going to Kibra. Then the next uh, stop is Machakos, then Nakuru, like the entire nation, before they come back to Nairobi. So right. that means the, the, there's an end goal to this. Right. So the question would be, what is the end goal? Right. Is it selfish interest? Is it the right. interest of the nation at large? So talking about uh, an audit being carried out by uh, independent bodies which are not from within our nation, that is the Commonwealth and the, and the United, United Nations, Nations yeah. this means uh, that there is some transparency that is needed. Right. So we would ask the government, uh, what is the worst that can happen if at all these bodies come and carry I'm out invited, yeah. Yeah, an audit? What's the worst that can happen? And if at all, if they have to, it's, it's the current government that will have to allow that to happen. Yeah, because we are a sovereign nation and we have a government in place. Right. And the government means that we, the people, we have given our powers to the government to act right. on our behalf. All right. 
So, but at the same time, the constitution gives the people the sovereignty. You see? So, if at all the people are going to demand for this, governments are usually pressured. So, if at all the opposition has the numbers in terms of support of the people in the nation, it would be quite easy for the government to give in. Maybe we would say, depending on, uh, depending on the strength of the president, because the, there are some presidents who are really firm. One right. would say that um, the current, our current president, uh, Dr. Ruto, is firm. Right. So that would kind of depend, yeah? But what I would advise the president is look at the, at the bigger picture moving forward. Do we want to see another, another political events immediately after elections uh, in 2027? That mm -hmm. would be the question. Would right. we want to have a similar occurrence in 2032 going forward? Right. So when are we going to sit down as a nation and say this is the solution actually? Right. In as much as uh, there's a party that will always lose and some will never agree to it, but the question is, it's not really about the loss, it's about the transparency. Was right. it transparent enough for everyone to say that, yes, in as much as maybe I may contest it, but this is the truth? Right. So the transparency is the question. Right. Yes. So the international uh, bodies coming in, the government would ha will have to uh, concede to it because they have the instruments of power. They have the, uh, um, the control, whatever is there, in as much as we have the independent bodies like uh, the IEBC. But of course, the government has a hand in it, one way or another. So right. they will not just the give out the servers. And like they that. must actually control. Yes. They are the ones in charge. Exactly. You know, but now the other side is like, they can't do that. You know? Uh huh, exactly. But um, what we should look at again, what we should look at, and I would like to insist on this, is that we should have a dialogue as a nation. All right. We and should this have a dialogue as a nation. The other side, right. Yes. <laughs> The dialogue cuts across the political divide. Let all the players sit down. Right. Let us solve this, uh, this menace of going back to politics every time immediately after an election. Because and we need to move on as a, as a nation. And every time, you know? Yes. But um, I, I don't want to ask that one. I don't want to ask that one. <laughs> Let me just mm -hmm. clear my mind. Hey. Now, um, of course, the four commissioners have already exited office. Uh, we saw Chebukati having his uh, last sitting in the tribunal last week. And then uh, he said, in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the interrogation, he said, at some point, Rafael Tuju visited him to you know, do some sort of exchange so that they announce elections in favor of the other side. Mm -hmm. And then yesterday, in the Jacaranda rally, uh, as a mere leader said that you know he has a footage and photos he has receipts of uh, Chebukati visiting his household demanding for a bribe now this again has thrown us into a dilemma like now the other side has receipts and footage this other side Chebukati in an interview said he was visited by Rafael Tuch. he was pushed in front he was told if he can't announce the other side then they'll have to abduct him which also the president alluded to it and said there was uh, a premeditated murder uh, plan to actually have Chebukati abducted and murdered what is going on okay um number one I think uh three commissioners resigned then uh commissioner uh Irene is the one who went uh, through the tribunal process. We're waiting for, for the decision of the tribunal. And now, talking about whatever Chebukati said and also whatever Honorable Raila said, uh, all these are allegations. They're just claims. For now, they're mere claims unless right. they are proven. Right. Unless they're proven. We cannot say that now I'm going to believe whatever Chebukati said or I'm going to believe whatever... Raila said. No, they have to prove it. They have to prove it. Whatever the president said, those are serious allegations. Okay. You call them allegations? <laughs> yes, we call them allegations because we do not have uh, any proof to, uh, to it. Okay. See? So if at all we are going to believe it, uh, we cannot just believe it from someone's uh, word of mouth. In as much as he's the president, but him, him being the president, he should initiate a process whereby 
all these allegations are going to be substantiated and all these people should be uh, taken th through the legal process so that if they are found culpable, let the law take its, uh, uh, its course against right. them. So that, again, we should not be looking at such things moving forward. Because right now, one of the most uh, uh, scary positions in our nation is being the chairman of IEBC. Exactly. I remember <laughs> I interviewed Senator Maura, I think, a couple of weeks ago, and he told mm -hmm. me, if you want to die fast in Kenya, mm -hmm. work at the IEBC. But why, though? How safe and how independent is the election body now? Exactly. It should not be scary working in an independent commission, actually independent commission, because the constitution that we have right now, it forms the commissions. And right. these commissions are supposed to be independent. Independent means they operate without interference from any other actors in government or from wherever. Right. They must be independent. Right. You see? So, but right now, you being a commissioner and worst of all being the chairperson of IEBC, right. it's like you are, you are signing your, your death sentence. It's right. just the debt that will remain uh, uh, blank Is for it because now. of vested interest? Certainly, because of vest vested interests here and there. Because people want to get power. And right. as it is said, that power is not given, power is taken. And one of the ways to take power is to be in control of the commissioners. Mm. Okay, but right now, again, if you want to move on as a nation, if it is an independent commission, let it be independent. Yeah. And how independent will it be? Will it uh, like act, uh, conduct itself? Uh, what will make it independent? One of the things, especially for bodies like IABC, is transparency. Yeah. Is transparency in as much as uh, in the immediate uh, past elections we saw like we could like add the, the votes for ourselves. But there are more questions to it. Mm -hmm. The Supreme Court ruled against uh, some of the allegations. That is it. In as much as some people may not agree with it, but that is it. That is what we go with right now. But right. moving forward, we need transparency. And okay. this transparency also will emanate from how are we uh, how are we getting these commissioners to these positions? Right. Because some people, like maybe in the opposition or in the government, will try to push people who have their interests in the commission so that yeah. their interests can be protected while in the commission. Right. You see. So they already have a stronghold. Yeah, they already have a stronghold. They already have their person in the in commission. That, you know. that should not be the case because already Chapter 6 of the Constitution talks about integrity. Right. So if at all you do not meet the, tre the threshold that is uh, set out in Chapter 6 of the Constitution, you must not hold any public office in the nation. Right. But already some of these questions which are being uh, asked here and there, it raises questions, number one, as to how are these people vetted before they got into the commission? Right. Yes. So that is one of the most important things. And right now we are talking about um, amendment of the IEBC Act on okay. how uh, commissioners will be um, selected you know, yes, the into the commission. Which is a bone of contention for the other side. Yes. Of, of course, that's what they're fighting for. They've been very vocal. They're saying the current government cannot be the only you know, authority in charge of selecting the new you know, upcoming election officials, which uh, I believe you, you'd agree that it's, uh, it's among one of the main issues that the other side is fighting for. True, true. Because uh, if at all I get my people, my friends, or people who uh, have my interests at heart and I get them to a certain position, uh, which is going to decide a certain tra trajectory for, for something, of course I will be having an upper hand. Right. Okay? So in this case, it should not be only the government or right. only the opposition uh, putting a hand into this. Yeah. No. It's all hands on deck. It should cut across the political divide. So exactly. that when we are getting to, uh, to elections, number one, all the parties are settled that the people who are conducting these elections, right. they are neutral. Right. They are neutral. Or if you guys have selected your, your, your people to this commission, we have selected our people to this commission. Like it should be both sides. It should be both sides. Right. So that there is some sort of uh, equity. Yes. Balance. Yeah. Yes. And exactly. Not.
Right. And, 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 and I think we're very, we are due for a very short break. But when we come back, I'd also like you to just shine the light on those are, those are very highly contested, you know, uh, debate about uh, what is it called? The uh, 48... Uh, uh, 48 parties to benefit from the, uh, the government funds. funds. Yeah, so uh -huh. we'll be talking about that in much more. So we take a break, we come back right about now. Why two five four?